Hello there friends and welcome! I'm here today with a quick but very exciting update on Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Most importantly, we are finally getting our first downloadable content or expansion for the game, Inevitable Excess, which will be released on February 15th, so pretty close, something like two weeks. Now I know there's some data mine spoilers and in-depth details about this DLC, but I personally stay away from those, as I would much rather experience it for the first time when it actually releases, instead of reading spoilers and so. What I do know about it is that it's actually going to take place during the late game, so around chapter 5 and 6, I believe. Which does make me very excited, because as you might already know, the late game is somewhat lacking in Pathfinder, Breath of the Righteous, there isn't that much to do when compared to the early game, so I'm hoping this new DLC is going to change that, especially because it's also meant to take place after you reach your Mystic Rank 10, so you will finally be able to experience the game with your character at full power, as most of the Mystic Peps don't really have anything left to do after you reach Rank 10 besides fighting the final boss. I do wonder how they're going to actually implement this DLC, because, well, we do have quite a lot of different Mystic Paths, and they're certainly all going to change the story, especially in the late game where we have access to Go Dragon, Legend, Swarm, and even Devil. Now, and this is just speculation on my part, but if you were to ask me what this DLC is going to be about, well, from the title and the promotional image we have so far, Inevitables are actually outsiders who are tasked with maintaining the cosmic order around the planes, and they do look like constructs and from the picture we have this big golem looking dude, so yeah, I'm guessing that's the inevitable. And I have this screenshot here of the Pathfinder wiki that explains what inevitables are in the Pathfinder setting. If you are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, they're pretty much the same. As I've just said, they're living machines whose prime purpose is to destroy agents of chaos and maintain the order. I'm guessing because our main character does get mystic powers throughout the story as just a mortal, this probably ended up pissing off some powerful construct outsider, but it's just speculation really. And this does also bring me to another point about what new enemy types we are going to face in the DLC. I'm guessing since the main big boss is going to be an inevitable, we are probably at last going to see some lawful aligned enemies instead of the demons who are basically just chaotic evil, as inevitables and creatures like them tend to be lawful neutral instead. This would certainly reduce the power of certain characters like Paladins, although remember that in Wrath of the Righteous we can actually buy a longsword that lets you smite even neutral line enemies, and you can only get it during Chapter 4 as I explain here in my longsword's guide, link to the side and down below. So in preparation for this DLC I think it would be wise to actually keep that sword ready just in case. And on the other hand, characters like Magus can also enchant their weapons with the anarchic property to inflict extra damage against lawful aligned creatures so long as the Magus is chaotic aligned. So playing a chaotic good Magus as a trickster which I also talk about in my video might end up being very fun too. That's of course assuming we actually fight lawful aligned enemies. And once again this is just speculation but I think there's a high possibility this might end up being the case. I'm sure as soon as we get close to release we'll finally be able to know what this is really all about. But as I've said before, you can also check some spoilers around the internet, as some of the dialogue script events have been data mined already. I'd also really like to know what are your thoughts going to be on this new DLC and what you expect out of it. Personally, I really can't wait to try it out, so stay tuned as I'll certainly make videos about it as soon as it releases. Now for a second, perhaps less important but also very fun new update, we also just got a brand new free DLC called A Visitor from Distant Lands, which lets you get a new dragon pet that's inspired by Asian mythology, so more of the, you know, long, snaky dragon type, instead of the winged reptiles we often get from western folklore. And finding our new dragon pet is very easy, after you install the free DLC, all you have to do is basically check your personal chest, either in the tavern area, so Defender's Heart during Chapter 1, your campsite during Chapter 2, or the Dresden City during Chapter 3 inside your room. And here we go. Sovereign Dragon summons a tiny pet Sovereign Dragon. So our new dragon friend does give you a bonus of plus one morale on Knowledge World, Arcana, Nature, and Lord Religion checks. Well, it's not that much, especially since we can just get Heroism for twice that, 
I do think the Sovereign Dragon looks pretty neat, and of course we can have both Jarsigax, our Western Dragon, and the Sovereign Dragon, our Eastern Dragon, together at once for some fun times. So here we have Jarsigax and also the Sovereign Dragon, which is running away from us. He's actually bigger than Jarsigax, so he's just a newborn. And now our big bad demon character with the Eastern Dragon. Pretty neat, right? Lastly, we've just got a new patch as well, so update 1.2, but in this case it's still in betas, and this is why I haven't really talked about it yet. I'm waiting until they actually release the official version, if you may, as I would rather talk about it when all of the changes are truly final. But overall, this is only really going to change the Azata Kinetis' build, as far as my builds, that is, and also the Azata Vital Striker build. And as I said, I'll be sure to talk about it once we get the final version, and how that's going to affect your characters. Now before we end this video, I do believe Allcat Games also has two other DLCs prepared for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, besides Inevitable Excess. And I think they're going to follow the same line as Kingmaker, so the first DLC is going to be this mythic one, Inevitable Excess, that we are soon going to be getting. The second DLC is going to be just like Varnhold's Lot from Kingmaker, so a side adventure with new party members exploring one of the cities as it fell, I think the city of Canabras. And lastly, a roguelike dungeon DLC just like Beneath the Stolen Lands from Kingmaker, which is also going to add a new very big dungeon to the main campaign of the game, so you can either do it with your main character, or also create a whole new party and play a different standalone game mode where you just adventure inside the dungeon. Out of all the three DLCs, the ones I'm really looking forward to are of course Inevitable Access for the Mystic Adventure, and also the last one for the Roguelike Dungeon. I'm not really a fan of Varnhold's Lot, as I don't enjoy taking the focus away from your main party. But hopefully it's also going to include new items and feats that you also get access to with your main characters. At least this was the way with Varnhold's Lot. Even if you didn't bother with it, you could still get new feats added to the game at least. I do really wonder what kind of new items we're going to be getting with the Varnhold lot like DLC. After all, in Kingmaker we actually did get very powerful items by completing it in the main quest. One of them an infamous Falcata that had higher critical range. If we have a weapon like that in Wrath of the Righteous and you combine it with Trickster, well, it's certainly going to be very powerful and very fun and certainly works as an incentive to actually completing the DLC, even if it's not about our main character and his party. Well, so this was it everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this little update about Pathfinder, and if you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and even become a member of the channel to support it if you can. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends!